Police say eight teenagers uh, stole two cars in Midtown. We're in the process of stealing a third when they were caught, apprehended by police. Uh, they tried to run from police. They had uh, a stolen gun on them, at least one. And within two days, it's the decision by the juvenile court judge, Tariq Sugarman, to release uh, all eight teenagers. Actually, he didn't have any uh, uh, say in the 18-year-old. Uh, but it was a, uh, something that sparked a lot of uh, commentary all through the community, but specifically the owners of those two cars yeah. when they heard that that had happened. I want you to hear from one of those car owners right now when she heard that the eight teenagers were released. It's just unbelievable, you know? Um, I always hope and wish that the system would change, um, but I don't know what that could look like. Um, it is really frustrating. Like you just think, like how do you not? How are you not aware or conscious of other people's properties or things? And like they're being um, reckless to other people on the road. Like that's so dangerous. And then to have a gun in their possession that's stolen. They had just bought their car like three or four days before it was stolen. So you certainly feel for them. Uh, let's put up a post that was made by uh, House Speaker Cameron Sexton on Twitter uh, about how he was not shocked at all uh, to learn that this happened. Uh, basically made kind of a sarcastic uh, tweet about, well, it doesn't surprise me a bit that an 18 year old uh, who was uh, uh, charged with this, this and this would be released in Memphis. And you have this criticism uh, growing uh, against our two newly elected officials who are who are law enforcers, basically, and that is Tariq Sugarman, the juvenile court judge, and Steve Mulroy, the new DA, about are we are we going soft on crime here uh, in allowing them to be released? Now I keep saying released, that's not truly accurate because they're still charged with a crime and they're still going to have to make their court appearances. Uh, it was just decided that they aren't going to stay locked up uh, until that happens. What are your thoughts on how? People are reacting. Well, I think people have a right to react with concern. Um, these kids, most of them, 13 years old, 15 years old, uh, and what complicates it, they had weapons, they had guns on them. So, if you remember, t maybe seven, ten years ago, when um, uh, former, well, she's a county commissioner now, Henry Brooks called in the DOJ, the mm -hmm. Department mm -hmm. of Justice, yeah. came down and. Uh, investigated juvenile court and juvenile court and the county had signed a memorandum of agreement with the DOJ and part of that memorandum is to lower the number of kids that are kept at juvenile court uh, well or even brought in now before the agreement to about 2,000 kids a year were brought to juvenile court now that number has dropped to about 600. Right. That memorandum of agreement has expired, but that policy is ongoing at juvenile court. Now, if you have just 600 a year, and that's for all sorts of crime, mm -hmm. but most of them are for all these. The, the, um, stealing a car now is considered theft of personal property and not a big deal. So what? tell me what happens to those 1,400 kids that are no longer brought down to juvenile court, you know what? A lot of them are out there stealing cars. Mm -hmm. And how do you fix that? How does a community, don't we have an obligation somehow to fix it? You know, I think that Judge Sugarman got to juvenile court and didn't realize how, what a difficult job that is. But it, it just seems to me the problem he's got there too is that juvenile court does not have enough money to create the intervention programs that many of these kids need. A lot of these children, and I saw it for quite a few years when I was associated with juvenile court, they are arrested and they commit these crimes. They come from home, homes where there's no authority and that love is lost between poverty and hopelessness. And I just don't know how you fix that in an institution, unless you bring a community together, we don't have an effective way of doing that here. Yeah. And it does take money. I mean, it, 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 no, it doesn't matter what your party or political affiliation, everyone agrees that juvenile court needs a lot more money than it's getting, but oh. the, we have a state legislature that's not inclined to help us very much. And well, a, or a county commission. Right. Well, and not, not in the legislature, not only are they not inclined to help us, but like you said, Cameron Sexton, they, they want to criticize us mm -hmm. uh, at every opportunity. Um, we have to tip a little lightly here, though because poli uh, people who are charged with crimes, sometimes even violent crimes, they do get released. 
mostly on bond most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I don't have a real problem with releasing them. But that young lady in the, in, the, in the clip that we just showed, that resonates with a lot of people. You know, having your car stolen or broken into a car jacked, uh, it just sets a bad image uh, for Memphis and then to have the state uh, representative to pile on there, it does not help. Um, we don't have enough money to maybe put ankle bracelets on all of these folks. We just don't have that kind of uh, money and, and resources mm -hmm. to do that, to keep, make sure that they're not out there stealing cars while they're waiting on a case in which they stole a car. That's just part of the problem here. And I don't really know what the answer is. Yeah, let me qu really quick, I got a couple yeah. minutes left, and I also want to bring up another case that was mm -hmm. big this week. Reverend Artur Eason Williams, who was killed last year. Uh, we also learned this week that the juveniles involved in that case, one of them who was actually, according to police, the one who pulled the trigger, uh, will be tried as an adult. Yeah. Uh, the older one, who's 17, will be in juvenile court for another two years until they're 19, mm -hmm. uh, but was not uh, tr transferred to adult court. Uh, so again, the, this issue is coming up about our, how are we treating our juveniles? And, and you know, there's certainly an argument to be made that we need to try to rehabilitate uh, and get them on the right path. But you have to face consequences for your actions too. Well, I think that that, that was that's a very interesting case because uh, with um, when when Mulroy and Sugarman ran for office, they said they didn't want to send kids to transfer them to um, 201 Poplar. This is a case where they had to go back on that, and they said they did. But the 19-year-old who part of his plea agreement was that he had confessed to a murder. In two years, two years, he's back on the street without, without any real true intervention with this guy. So what do you, you know, if some enterprising reporter for the next 20 years wants a good story, follow the kid. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I, I sympathize with the woman whose car was, was yeah. stolen. Yeah. It, you know, a lot of people say, well, these are just kids who are stealing the cars. You don't want them in, in the criminal justice system. They're just kids. They're just kids unless they steal your car. Right. And then it becomes a real crime. They decide to use that weapon. That Absolutely. Right. So mm -hmm. um, do I have an answer for it? No. But I think part of the answer can begin with this community needs to support the real um, services that juvenile court should be there for, and that is to have effective intervention with some of these kids, because you send them back, these 13-year-olds these that were, are back at home, they're back in the same neighborhood they came from. Yeah. What, what makes you think they're just gonna sit at home, become a choir boy overnight until they have their hearing in juvenile court? Mm -hmm. The whole thing is, just doesn't make a lot but of the sense. the 15-year-old in the uh, uh, Eason Williams case, um, that's a correct decision. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're talking about first degree murder in the perpetration of a carjacking. Yeah. There's no brainer. I don't care who you are and how liberal you are. Um, that is a no brainer. He needs to be charged. And he has. In the he, court. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll leave it there. When we come back, we want to talk about some uh, new legislation introduced in Nashville that would affect our elections going down the road. See if this panel here agrees with what's being proposed with or not uh, when we come right back.